fire in the middle of the wooden box car and put the wooden box car in the center of the bridge and it just smoked it and never caught fire. Uh, and because of the close pursuit of Fuller and Murphy in Texas, they weren't able to uh, block or disable the tunnel in the tunnel. So the raid itself, total failure, had no strategic impact whatsoever on the war or even on the battle for that being said, all the raiders were captured. Now, one of the reasons for this is because, uh, remember, Andrews was a civilian. He might have been a Pinkerton detective whose past was kind of shattered, uh, but uh, he was a civilian. So here's 21 guys with guns on the general, the raiders. And there's Fuller and Murphy and maybe three or four Confederate soldiers on the Texas. Seems to me they could have set an ambush and they could have wiped out their pursuers and got back on the train and made it to Chattanooga. But when they abandoned the general, Andrew said every man for himself, they all took off in the woods. Uh, they were all eventually captured, either by Georgia militia or by some very ticked off North Georgia farmers. I would not recommend messing with North Georgia farmers. Eight of them were hung, including Andrews. It was, it was pretty easy to accuse them of being spies because they were behind enemy lines out of them. Eight escaped and made it back to enemy lines, and six were involved in prisoner exchange. Twenty of the 22 original military members of the raid received the Congressional Medal of Honor. The first Congressional Medal of Honor ever given was given to a member of Andrew's Raiders. This is another reason why it's still, uh, still pretty famous even today. Almost everybody who was involved in the raid got the medal of honor. And I don't think that's ever happened in it where um, you know, everyone involved in some sort of military operation is given congressional medal of honor. Irony of ironies, Andrew and a civilian did not uh, receive the award. And back then they didn't have the, the Kennedy Center honors. But that sort of thing. This is a piece of WNA script.
people ask, what would it take to run the Roman general again today to accomplish great things? And just the figure that was bandied about 10 years ago, Ted Turner was thinking about making a mini series about the raid he wanted to use in the general, probably 750000 to a million dollars. Because even though the boiler was replaced in the late 50s by the LNN, and it's in perfectly good shape, how many people think OSHA would let uh, us operate that? I would complete that statement. So, uh, 1866 assigned locomotive number 39. Since it was a 39th locomotive placed in service for only a minute. So, it had more than one number in the service. We actually have information here on 67, 68, and 69, how many miles it went, and what it costs to repair, and uh, how many cars it built. So, 1867, Starting to tail off a little in 69, the 440s had seen their day, so they weren't the, the mainline sexy locomotives anymore, but they were still being used. So, up until this time, the WA is being operated by the state of Georgia. Uh, here, I always have to cough a little bit because this sounds a little sleazy to me, but I'll leave it up to you, Carol, if you want to think about it. The WA is leased by a group led by the former governor, Joseph E. Brown. So the guy who's governor right before that leases the railroad for this. What that uh, The general's value of $2,000. Uh, indicates that it, it ran 127,000 miles during its uh, state of Georgia operations. Early 1870s, the general is completely rebuilt by the WA and is converted to a coal worker. So it's still an operation, it's still a revenue operation, but it's not a main line of the road anymore. 1880, you start to see kind of the beginnings of the historic preservation movement with the general. It's reassigned number three, it says it's the third oldest local road on the WA at that time, and that's the number it still has today. 1886, and the WA is converted to what is now the standard gauge. Uh, 1887, it, the general is used to rescue some stranded passengers near Chickamauga, but more interestingly, it pulls a special train for the International Convention of Car Accountants. So it's about this time people are starting to think, isn't this that famous locomotive who was involved in that chase during the war? Well, can we rent it so that, that it, you know, we can ride behind it? So it's starting to move into its, its tourist uh, train period. 1887 to 1888, which ran into the Atlanta and Florida Railroad. 1888, it's involved in the Grand Army of the Republican Camp in Columbus, Ohio, 